That was on me, guys. That was on me. I'm sorry, that was on me. Keep it rolling. Keep it rolling. I'm just saying. Keep it rolling. It's it's Trent. This is gonna sound. Oh, we got we do a picture. Sorry, you just, everything you start is it's trans and then you just you cut it off. Good evening, DJ. Welcome back to another episode D- of DJ Hours. D- what are we gonna spell? What's hey. That? FT F- draft. draft. Yeah, yeah. draft. F- yeah. He's gonna spell the draft. It is NFL. Dra- it is the NFL draft week. Exclamation this point. Thursday, kicking off Bam. round one. Caleb Williams, of course, being the number one Ooh, pick. Wee. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. We're gonna get it. We're gonna get it. We're We covered our way too early draft episode. If you didn't see that, <laughs> scroll back a couple months on the page. It's like sometime in February, right after college football season ended. We're like, all right, you gotta give it talk. We gotta still talk college football, guys. Um, but now it's here. It's draft week. We have a lot to cover. Yep. It's the entire episode is gonna be the draft. I mean, there's other things we can talk about. We no, talked NBA playoffs well, last we? weekend. Why should we? We could talk about the Lakers getting screwed. Yeah, by no, the refs, not. Scott Foster yeah, legacy game. Not. We're not gonna talk about that. Just the NFL draft. draft. <laughs> we are here. Chicago Bears on the clock. Let's get into it. All right, we're here. <laughs> draft day. We got to lock in, boys. We've been prepping for this for a couple it, months. Oh, yeah. The Bears. That just means we're closest to, closer to college football. That's all I care about. That's yeah, we are just inching <laughs> our way closer to college football. We've, like I said, we've covered the draft in a couple episodes. We did a big episode, like an hour and forty minute guy on the draft. Yeah. Um, we're obviously one man down today. Oh. Tate, who's usually on this side, is R. not R. with R. us. Um, well, he not, didn't have any. R. He R. didn't R. have any input that you're R. missing R. though. So no, he's alive. <laughs> he's alive. Yeah, he's alive. He's alive. Barely. Very much alive. He's alive. No. Nope, um, uh, but no. it's just us four, and we're going to be covering everything draft. So I just want to read out <clears throat> the top 15 picks, the teams that are there, and then we can kind of talk about how we think this is all going to play out, and just we'll kind of just jump around a bit because I have a feeling some of these draft picks are going to change in the next few days. We're it hasn't filming, changed yet. Which we're is filming this I mean, Tuesday night, by the way. <clears throat> so. There may be a change in the next, you know, 24 hours before this gets posted. Oh, yeah. So like just it. know that this is the draft order that we're talking about when we're going through it. It's yeah. Bears at one, Caleb Williams. The Bears. Caleb Williams. Yeah, it's Caleb Williams. Yeah, Caleb Williams. Yeah, it's Caleb Williams. Yeah, it's Caleb Commanders it's at two, yeah. Patriots at three, Cardinals four, Chargers five, Giants six, Titans seven, Falcons eight, Bears again at nine. Jets 10, Vikings 11, Broncos 12. Those 11 and 12 are the ones people are thinking to move around a bit. 13 Raiders, 14 Saints, 15 Colts. So there's your top 15. Juicy. Love we it. talked a whole lot about how Caleb Williams, like whether or not he should be the number one pick. They kind of already made that decision yeah. for us. Yeah. It was weird that that was a question like a month ago, yeah, a month they, and a half ago. Yeah. They yeah. traded away Justin Fields to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yep. Let's go, baby. Give me some. Oh, beautiful. <clears throat> beautiful. I, mean, I love that, it. We to sit them. to ride the bench. To ride the bench. To I mean, ride the bench. All we, need. we got Justin Fields for, for cheap for a sixth rounder. True. That True. Could we have paid nothing. Yeah, we, we, got, we got that pick from Chase Claypool. So, I mean, just... <laughs> yeah. Shout out nothing. Chase Claypool. Yeah, friend of the pod. Friend of the pod. Love him. He, he's kn- he knows he's a top five receiver in the league. Yeah, when he said he was top five, I was like, on your team? Barely. <laughs> <laughs> that was like, the funniest barely. Um, the, the Steelers also ever. picked up Russell Wilson... From the Broncos yeah. for $1.2 million. Yeah. We, we're yeah. doing great. I mean, uh, I can't another complain. Steal. Yeah, Steelers offseason. Yeah. Steelers are stealing. On fire. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's, that's, not, and we're just talking quarterbacks right now. I mean, not to mention, you know, Patrick Queen. Oh, my Huge God. I mean, signing. Yeah. I mean, this defense probably is the best shaping one up. Of your offseason. Well, yeah, yes and no. I'd say probably the best player we signed. I mean, for sure the best player we signed. But as far as biggest signing, I'd say it has to be well, the quarterbacks. I mean, because notability is always going to go quarterbacks. But, like... The most, no, not, not even like, no, not like, even notability. I'm, I'm saying our team was missing just one piece, <clears throat> yeah. and we added two playable pieces there. Yeah. So it's like I mean our defense was already good. we're fine. Top we didn't have to three yeah. in the league already. I mean it's just adding. And we get Hayward. Yeah, we don't need to talk. We don't need to talk about that. Yeah, Let's yeah, keep yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'm just saying. So the Broncos gave up their quarterback, Whew. gave him to the Steelers. Yeah. In trouble. Bears gave up their quarterback, gave him the Steelers. Broncos then replaced their quarterback. I don't know how much they feel this is a replacement, but they picked up Zach Wilson this week. Yeah. Oh, I, that's so. What's that, Mike? He's an NFL sergeant. Nothing's better than like all the the wives in Denver saying, "Let's ride." Yeah. <laughs> it's the funniest thing I've ever seen. The 35, 36 year old moms. Yeah. yeah. Let's ride. Now Zach Wilson's home. So do we think Zach Wilson? <laughs> will end up being the starter on the Broncos, or are they still going to draft a quarterback? Because everyone's been saying they're either they're drafting trade a quarterback. Up. I mean, they what? have to, right? They have what to. number are they? Eight? Nine? The Broncos 12. right now are... 12, 12 right I thought now. they're 12. So you can get, like, Bo Nix? 
Well, they're 12 right Why now. Anyone but anyone's going to get both. Apparently, the Chargers' fifth pick is very much, and maybe the Cardinals at four, which we'll get into, are very much up for I feel grabs. like every pick is just up for grabs. I don't I'm think not. two or I three I heard are. Commanders even. I would no, be shocked. I don't think shocked. the Commanders give out their pick. I would be shocked. They don't have a quarterback. They, they got rid of Yeah, Sam they out. need it. Yeah. I know, but they, they could just move back, get a get a second round, second and third rounder for like maybe No, you'd probably be smart. Unless they're taking Drake May. The only way they could do that is they get like, the tenth pick or something. Well, here, let's, and then let's go like, ahead. Let's uh, go ahead and talk about this. Is the next thing I want to get into is who should be the second quarterback off the board because we're assuming Caleb's one, and like, do you think the commander should stay there? So it's kind of a two part. Like at number two, <coughs> who's picking who? I essentially, mean, isn't it pretty locked down, Drake May? No, no. I heard, no. heard Jaden Daniels. Like Mel two Kiper ago. has Jaden Daniels as the two, and a Mel lot Kiper's of other like pro crazy. football focus. A lot of other places have him. I, at two. I, I heard a lot. Of, I heard even GM saying that they thought. Commanders were going to take Jalen Daniels at two. So that, that could be crazy. Well, what are you thinking, Ryan? I don't know. I'm, I've been on the no quarterback should be taken outside the first eight picks. So I think they but should. But we just, know Caleb's one. Saying, so Caleb's out. Yeah. I think they should fall back and try to get a lot of leverage for this big quarterback class <clears> that people <throat> might trade up for. So I think they should go to like 12 or 13, and then there's still the Knicks, maybe McCarthy, maybe Penix, or go deeper for him. And get a late first rounder, maybe early second rounder, two of them for the next couple of years. Yeah, I just don't see that much difference after Caleb Williams, who like I still don't think is a first round pick, but he's gonna be. I don't see that much difference between them and like one of those guys later. And you can get so much haul this year because so many people need a quarterback. But it's Drake May. He's the second best quarterback in his class if it comes down to that. It's yeah, Drake I May. actually completely agree with you there. I think it's the best idea in the world, especially this class, to trade back. I mean, historically speaking. The strongest move you can do in drafts is to not overdraft a quarterback. Yeah. Unless he's, you know, <clears throat> the chosen, a yeah. Joe Burrow type, like number one guarantee. God, yeah. Andrew Luck. Or, yeah, yeah. Andrew Luck. Or, and just accumulate as many draft picks as you can. Yeah. Or players yeah. or assets. Like, especially for a team like the Commanders, to where it's like, say they draft a Drake May or a Jaden Daniels. Are they, they doing anything next no, year? No, I'm saying. Are they still? Is it That's why they they I feel bad for whoever goes to because they're screwed. People That's need to start following the Texans thing where you build it first and you have picks to get Nico, Tank Dell, Noah Brown, well, yes. and then you just bring in one People person. forget. You're totally right. People forget how the Texans even got to that spot in the first place. It wasn't because they just had the second pick and picked. They traded draft. away all they the players. They traded everyone and yeah. just a draft pick, draft pick, draft pick, draft pick. And then they were like, oh, let's get Will Anderson, CJ Stroud, mm-hmm. all of a, Derek St- or Stingley, everyone. And then all of a sudden you're like, whoa, yeah. playoff team. This is a team, yeah. yeah. No, so I agree with you completely. And then also, <clears throat> I think if they go to, I think they will take Jaden Daniels, but I think they should take Drake May. Hmm. That's kind of what I'm feeling. Yeah, I mean, I have also seen, I've seen a lot of things where it's like even J.J. McCarthy going around this area. If which- J.J. goes to, I <laughs> Hey. I mean, holy, hey. shit. holy shit. I'll lose Where everything. Where do you read that? Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, report hey. has been Mike's hey, article. Is it college Mike's season already? Mike's articles I'm are coming around, back. I'm looking at all the, you know, expert draft, mock drafts and stuff like it's that. It's just Michael's expert name. Draft you know, mock no, 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 I'm just saying. All these expert draft mock drafts <laughs> yeah. that are saying McCarthy's going one or two. It's just Michael's name. <laughs> He's page. not going one. He's not going one. But he might be going two. It's between, obviously, McCarthy, Jane Daniels, and uh, what's his face? Drake May. But it's like, you know. I, I don't think... So you have three options. I'm three. just saying, we're leaving a guy out of the conversation <laughs> when I think, you know, we should toss him into a conversation. You think J.J. McCarthy should legitimately be in the number Do two pick conversation? Do you think he's, like, I think he's worthy of being the Two second. or three. That's barred out. Wow. Guy did nothing. Two or three. So... <laughs> the guy will get absolutely You think the lost. commanders are going two and you're saying they should really look at J.J.? Like, seriously consider... J.J. McCarthy at two over if J.J. It's not If it's not Drake, uh, Drake May, then, you know... Than JJ McCarthy. I don't. I don't know if it's that big of a difference between Jaden Daniels and JJ McCarthy, considering JJ McCarthy won a national championship. Did he what? though? I mean, he did. His <laughs> team won the national championship. He. They you know used him pe- when they needed. Bro, you Mac know get, Jones they won the national him. championship. You know yeah. Look Penn, how that worked out. How many passes did JJ McCarthy throw against Penn State in their close game? I'm not in the second half. Zero. The, the entire second <laughs> half, they had him throw zero. But it wasn't passes. necessary. They no the they, NFL they, is going to be. They necessary. ran the ball every play <laughs> because that was all that was working. Name a comparable. He threw eight balls. No, I got it. because Him? well because it was sufficient. Mike, Mike, it's not because Mike, it wasn't working. Mike, if you have a number two or not, pick at quarterback, what draft as his number two quarter pick at quarterback ever had a game where they're like, you know what, we are better off if you're not throwing this ball. 
in college. Name a comparable Again, NFL quarterback. Again, it's don't fix what ain't broke. It's, you could have the weapon there, but if you just don't use it, I mean, that's fine. You don't use it, but that doesn't deplete what? from the fact that it is still a weapon no, but if you best, in your if, arsenal. Wouldn't you assume that the number two overall pick in the draft, the second best player in the entire draft class, is the in best college, option for his team. should be the best option on your team? Or else maybe, you know, he's not the number two pick. Yeah. He's not a top Or that team was just really good. <clears throat> So you're saying, like, Blake Corum, probably better player than J.J. McCarthy. No, I mean, Blake Corum isn't better than Jonathan Brooks. I mean, but Blake Corum got every single but he was the, who they big carry when it's they a, needed it's a, it. It's a system thing, right? It's like certain players work in certain... So J.J. McCarthy is a college he's system a, quarterback a system. that we should take it to. Ah, I mean, uh, now you're just mixing up my words. We're <laughs> we're perfectly repeating. Why do you have to say it like that? Why do you have to say it like that? Flippity flip. I actually really, I actually really want to break it down because I haven't, I have actually never heard. I've listened to a lot of stuff. I haven't heard him at two at all. I've genuinely seen a at least one mock draft report <laughs> that had him at two. Was it like in NFL Network? Could you just show us? Could you just show us? Pull it up. If you find it, pull it up here in the edit. I'll send you five bucks. I mean, I'll can find it now. It's gonna be on like Reddit or Twitter no, or some like account no, with like just, nine followers. It's gonna be. I like, clicked on a lot of them. You know, I, I read page. through a lot of them. I took notes on the wall. Okay, so you're going JJ to Mario. No, I'm not going JJ at two. I'm just saying he should be in so the who, conversation. Who would you take okay. it to? Uh, the question was who are you taking it to, and all you've talked about is JJ McCarthy. Well, again, I'm just saying I think he should be in the conversation. Okay, I'd okay, still okay. go probably sure. Drake May, but okay. Yeah, he should be in no conversation. All right, Mario, who are you going it to if Caleb's off the board at one? Um. Who do I think is the second best quarterback option after Caleb Williams is Jaden Daniels. But who do I want to go in real life is probably Drake May or anyone else because, I mean, whoever goes to is fucked. You're, you're, you're a fan of Jaden Daniels. Yes, yeah, so I so want him to succeed. you don't want him to go to the Commanders. Yeah, do because you, like, I, I want him to have a chance. Do but, you feel like three's a better place, though? Like, no, like I, I'm defense? hoping he like somehow fades. If he had to choose, though. I'm so I'm because odds are he's, he's going probably going two or three. He's going to the Commanders or Patriots. I would like, do Commanders I would take two because that you get offense more money. actually also has way more weapons than Patriots by far. Yeah, mile. but the Patriots but. defense is like top five in the NFL. I'm saying for Daniels, he was so LSU had no defense; it didn't matter. Yeah, all he needed was some weapons. True, and the NFC is easier than the AFC. Oh yeah, well, Patriots division is pretty brutal. It's pretty brutal. So, um, I mean, Commanders still have Eagles and Cowboys. It's tough, but yeah, I but just think weapons-wise. Wild, wild card could be like, you know, not eight or nine, it's, eight or nine wins. It's like a NFC. realistic scenario. Also, yeah. just yeah. weapons-wise, I'm telling you, that team, I mean. Uh, yeah, they have Brian Robinson and Terry Gibson. They have Terry McLaurin. Terry McLaurin like, and they, have, they have some guys. Jahan Dotson. They have people that you could throw yeah. to. You're right. How old is I mean, Terry Gibson? I feel like we've been saying his name for a long time. It's like 28, probably, 27. Oh, all right, not, not that long. But. I mean, he's probably been in the league five, time six is years. Relative. He was drafted time young. Relative. Could be older. Yeah. Sounds, I just watched Terry 28 just sounds like the right number. 28. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. See? He's in his prime. Yeah. They literally just <laughs> got that. Well, again, you know, uh, just watch Aaron Stower. Time, time is relative. That's well said. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, 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 <laughs> JJ McCarthy had two in time is relative. Yeah. So, <laughs> but, Jane Daniels. No, no, no. Jane not Daniels. Jane Daniels. Two. Not yeah. JJ. Yeah. So, Jane Daniels. I guess the kind of consensus then at three is whoever's left of the because give me like Caleb and then it's like Jane Daniels. Drake. We're saying Hayes. if there's a quarterback that is going to be taken, we're saying. Yeah. Right? There. I'm assuming because I don't think there should be a quarterback. No, the Patriots. But here's a side not what they you have. should, but like what's probably going to happen. That's right? what I'm saying. I was I was just making sure the argument. Do you think there's? Does anyone here think there's any scenario? Where One, there two, aren't three. three quarterbacks taking the th- top three picks, trades I don't everything. Think so. You no, think there's any world? Zero, zero there's, like if you were betting, any chance there's not three quarterbacks taking? No, because the top need for all three of these teams I is do. a quarterback. I, exactly why I agree or disagree, or I agree with that sentence because I think someone's going to trade up and not need a quarterback and pick like who would trade up <clears> for a not a quarterback? But, though? Exactly, that no. doesn't make sense because why would you trade up for a? You trade up into a position that you Modern think the player action. is so going to be taken. Say on right? draft so, day, the Patriots don't want this pick, and they're asking people. They're going to ask four through nine if they want the pick. Mm-hmm. They might not get it from four, five, and six. And seven might be, hey, you're giving me a bargain because you couldn't get better than four, five, and six. And I'll take up. We wouldn't be able to get Marvin, Marvin, Harrison, Marvin Harrison at seven. So now we're going to move up Brock Bowers at seven. Whatever the choice, Joe Alt, whatever your choice is, and they might get a deal. It's they say, hey, fuck it, we wanted this player. <clears throat> We got it for a second rounder instead of having to pay the house for it. I, I could, don't think it'll happen, but I think there's a world where. Yeah, I, could I don't see, think. He's I mean, obviously there's a chance. I could see at the three, maybe if it's like Marvin Harrison, and it's some weird scenario where, like a draft day, you know, movie type scenario where the Patriots somehow convince them they're going to take Marvin Harrison from the Cardinals if they don't trade or something. You know what I mean? Like some blackmail. Who's scenario. throwing the ball for the Patriots? Oh well, I mean no one. They need a quarterback. Yeah. But I'm just saying, I, really I could, I could kind of yeah. see it, but in no. 
I think it's got to be like minus a million. Yeah, that it goes I, I'm gonna bet. I'm gonna bet it. Back. If I can find it, I'll bet it. I'll get some juice on it. You get yeah, some I crazy mean, juice on that. <laughs> that would be interesting. What do you think is gonna happen? So after we're t- through the top three, with that four and five pick, because I think that's probably where the draft gets the most interesting. I mean, Cardinals the only real four, right? Yeah. Car- so it's Cardinals four, Chargers five, and I've seen this is where all the mock drafts go off the wagon. So like the first three are pretty, you know. Standard, we just talked about it. It's yeah. the three players, whatever order you want to tell them in at with Caleb at one. And then four, sometimes you see, you know, the Cardinals trading out of this pick and building positions. <clears throat> Some people are saying, hey, you still got Kyler Murray. Go I get like them game, Marvin Go Harrison. get Marvin Harrison, yeah. best receiver. Yeah. And then the Chargers are just the biggest wild card in the world because they abandoned ship at pass catching. I think their wide receiver one is what? Quentin Johnson right now? I mean, he's not even a wide receiver. Yeah, they're uh, they have Josh Palmer. Palmer. I mean, that's even Josh Palmer's way better than Quinn. Well, that's hundred oh, percent. But still, maybe a wide receiver one like ranked twenty seven. Yeah, and then like, in this five spot yeah. is probably going to be the most coveted draft spot up there because you know you know the Cardinals aren't going. If the Cardinals keep their pick, they're not going quarterback. Yeah. So this is the first of the everyone else draft where this is where you start seeing some of the projections yeah, for JJ McCarthy, Vikings coming in, Broncos coming in. Some people saying the Raiders might make a move up. So I just kind of want to open it up, see what do you guys see happening at this 4-5 for like what the teams do and what players are <clears> taken there. I like them going Roma Dunze here. I like... <laughs> who, who's they? Who's they? The Chargers. Oh, sorry. my God. So you think, right? pick. Wait, so you're just saying... They're going to do it Marvin again. Harrison, I, well, Roma Dunze? But the teams stay, right? and it goes yeah. Cardinals, Marvin Harrison... Yeah, I think Chargers, it goes quarterback for a top three and then receiver, receiver. And the, only reason no why, the only reason why, and normally I would say Joe Alt is the right pick to go here, but... They have a left tackle, right? And so it's like you don't – like people don't just like switch sides. I mean some people are good some enough to where they I've can. I've seen Joe Alt mocked on both sides where they have teams drafted. But, he, but he's player. actually a left tackle, right? Like his, his yeah. true nature is a left tackle. And so I would be kind of surprised if they double up on a position that they don't really need. And so the, what's the next necessary like supplement for their team is a receiver – and I mean, I don't know. It's also Jim Harbaugh, and I wouldn't be too surprised with him, who's very like, just I don't know. He seems he seems to want like a pretty powerhouse offense, or he seems to like powerhouse offense. That would be Joe Alt, right? Because <laughs> it's Michigan <clears throat> offensive line, strong, big. Again, but they just don't need it. So well, it's he like can, he can play. So I mean, he can play strategically. Right the guy can play center. So he can good. play right tackle. <laughs> They have them. They have them in a lot of team, like a lot of mocks have <clears throat> mocked to teams that are just haven't played right tackle. I mean, you know, I think because like I said, Joe Wall is probably the right spot. choice here. But but you think they go wide receiver and don't trade the pick? Correct. What about you? I if I were the Chargers, I would a hundred percent trade away this pick. This is James, like it's the worst like they possibly have. What? You sorry, sorry. He got mad. No, I mean after assuming Marvin. Harrison goes four. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's we can pencil that in. For so now. the first four, we just pencil yeah, yeah, yeah. there. Assuming he goes four, I mean, I I love. I'm an LSU fan. I love Malik Neighbors. Um, I think Roma Dunze is good. I think there's so many good receivers that like it's not a big discrepancy between like or a big fall off like going Neighbors here or waiting and then taking a receiver later like in the mid rounds. Um, yeah, and I think you just could get some value out of this. So. Uh, if you look at a team like maybe the Vikings, like uh, there's a lot of rumbling about they love, you know, J- JJ, McCarthy. JJ McCarthy. It's yeah. like, is, is he going to fall to 11? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe just trade up to that five spot, get the guy you want. Yeah. And if you're the Chargers, you just maybe get an extra second rounder or something. I don't know. But yeah, that's no, what I would do if I were them. I think the Chargers 100% trade this pick. Not even what I think they should do, I think they should trade the pick. But in reality, I think you're going to see pretty chalk those first four. I do think the Cardinals hold on and take the best receiver in the draft. And then I think the Chargers are going to get an arm and a leg for this draft pick. Yep. Yep. Like I think they literally can move from 5 to 11 with the Vikings or 5 to 12 with the Broncos. They're going to get, I mean, you're still picking, you know, top of the first round yeah. pretty much. And they're going to be able to get, you know, probably like a second and a third or like a second and a fifth or something. Like yeah. they're going to be able to add a lot to their team, which is what the Chargers need. Yeah. Chargers need depth. I mean, they just got a new coach, kind of cleaned house on offense, got rid of the running back, got rid of both receivers. Yeah. So you're going to need numbers. And when we're saying this draft is so deep, I mean, if you're getting like an Xavier Leggett in the second round, yeah. even if you want to go, I'd probably not recommend this, but if you're going like 
you're around that 11, 12 area, say Brock Bowers falls to you or someone like a Brock Bowers, yeah. top of the class receiver, tight end, and then you <clears> go get like an Xavier Leggett or like a Troy Franklin or like a Keon Coleman in the second round, all of a sudden your quarterback yeah. has weapons for the next four years. Mm-hmm. Like that's all, and all you had yeah. to do was just move six spots down. It's such Soon. a deep class for receivers. I yeah, mean, yeah. me and Ryan were talking before the podcast, like who's better, Neighbors or Brian Thomas? Like, there's really, I, I don't think there'll be that big of a difference between the two, honestly. Yeah, I Brian mean, I, I think I'm bigger on Neighbors, but like, you could, I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world to trade back and, oh my God, you got and that's Brian. Like 15 picks later, which is uh, yeah. crazy. And then all of a sudden, and then you have an extra second round pick or extra third round pick. No, like, yeah, it's crazy. I, I mean, the Chargers just got screwed with this positioning yeah. for drafting circumstances. But because you could trade away your picks, it's a dream, I think, for them. You trade away your picks, everyone you wanted to get, even if it was Joel, you can get Vashanu at the 13, <clears> and you <throat> just got an arm and a leg. If it was Malik Neighbors, you can get Brian Thomas, yeah. all these people with the 15, get an arm and a leg. Yeah. These are like, you don't, don't make the mistake you did last year by drafting a wide receiver you hope would pan out so yeah, early. I mean, we all, I mean, you were the loudest about it. Oh, but it was, we, we all kind of were a little skeptical on the Quentin Johnson train. I mean, is, TCU was. The most miracle story ever. And yeah. he was just catching Hail Mary after Hail Mary. And everyone's like, so first bad. round receiver? And then we realized, hey, this guy can't even play. And yeah. disappeared yeah. in the natty. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Learn your lesson. Trade back. Well, the whole team disappeared in the natty. <laughs> get the world. You guys are going to get the world. You have a, a unbelievable quarterback ability. So if you build and get picks for the next two years, I think you can be right back in playoff yeah. scenarios and start winning games. So. Did they? You know, this might be crazy. I, I think they did. Did they sign J.K. Dobbins? Or who signed J.K. Dobbins? Was it the, it was the Chargers? I didn't. They think signed so. Gus Edwards. I thought. No, I thought J.K. went to. Um, Gus Edwards is on the Chargers. Ch- J.K. Gus Ed- I know was Gus Edwards went with them. No. <clears throat> who did J.K. I mean, sign with? The Titans? Or no, no, that was someone else. I do forget. I don't think if it's. I mean, if he signed with the Chargers, that's. Chargers. Yeah. That was. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. No, I mean, yeah, that dude doesn't him play. Edwards, Chargers like, signed yeah, J.K. Dobbins to a one-year deal. That dude's right. torn, like, every ACL No, twice. I know, but I'm yeah. saying they, so they did just get their running back position filled out. No, yeah, I still with, think that. Build your, do with the Texans, just copy the Texans' resume when you already have a quarterback. It'll be fun. No, I agree. So, n- now that we all kind of, at least the majority of us, three of us, think that the Chargers are moving out, who is the team that needs to go up to five that would be the suitable move for them? And is that where J.J. McCarthy goes off the board? Do we really think we're doing this with J.J. McCarthy, or is, is this one of those mock drafts where everyone's hyping him up and the teams in reality are like, hey, look, like we like J.J. McCarthy, but we're not trading up and taking him at five? Yeah, I have one I have one that not many people have talked about, but I am obsessed with the Jets moving up to this position. It's not a lot, and you, it's not in many spaces, but if they get Brock Bowers or Malik Neighbors or just an offensive weapon or even Joe Alt yeah. to guard Aaron Rodgers, I, like I think – that team is ready to go. There is really mm. nothing stopping that team from exploding. Their defense is locked in. I mean, yeah. they're the only thing keeping yeah. them alive last no, year. Defense is insane. Their offense, Brees Hall is going to be, if he stays healthy, he's probably going to be a top three running back next yeah. year. And Garrett Wilson showed with anyone he's going to be good with Aaron Rodgers. He'll be great. Throw in one more offensive weapon, whatever it is. Tackle. Yeah. Why does she throw it out in? I love the Brock Powers to the Jets. I mean, I, think if, I think if there's any disgusting. team to move up and have the biggest impact, Immediately with any of those offensive players I named, I would love to see the Jets just do it. Aaron Rodgers, you have two more years maybe. Yeah. Go win a Super Bowl right now. I think it'd be sick. I love that. I actually really love that take because everyone in the world sang Vikings. Yeah, that's yeah. a that's the favorite. Yeah. I as much as I can rationalize a world where they do this, because we've seen teams do stupid shit before, mm-hmm. I just can't see the Vikings. The Vikings have always felt so safe to me at quarterback. Yeah. Like the way they the way they've moved and their team has done, you know, whether it was acquisitions, trades, re-signings, they always seem like the most consistent team. Like you're getting <clears> Kirk <throat> Cousins. They're not doing yeah. a top you're gonna, five pick. And no, not, but you're gonna you're gonna get a value wide receiver one, whether that's Stephon Diggs as your wide receiver one, and then go get Thielen as your wide receiver two. Yeah. Or draft Justin Jefferson. What was he like? Eighteen. Yeah. They picked him. Mm-hmm. They never like went crazy and traded up and made some big splashy move. This just doesn't feel like the Vikings to me. Maybe Especially for J.J. McCarthy. Thought, yeah, it like, just doesn't, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't right. sound right. So I feel like this is one of those fake signals that mock drafts kind of give off that's not going to come into play. I don't think J.J. McCarthy gets taken. The Unless it's seven. a draft day thing where the J.J. McCarthy top five happens and everyone falls down and they're looking at Jaden Daniels or Drake May at five because Cardinals wouldn't take him. And they're like, holy shit. 
Like, we have to go. We're going to go for this. I mean, if if you have – if Jaden Daniels or Drake May are available outside the top three, I'd advise all of these teams that need a quarterback to just – That's what I'm saying. I think that's the only scenario where, the, like Michael <clears throat> said, J.J. somehow gets in their top four picks. All of a sudden, one of them is broken down. Because yeah. the Cardinals are never going to take a quarterback, I don't think. No, no. So yeah, you have a perfect sense. pick at five to just snipe it and just get – if you get Jaden Daniels or Drake May at five – you're feeling like I feel you like want, once yeah. you get out of those top three, it's like there's no point in moving up because the there's such a like solidified gap of players. Not That's solidified if you gap of that. players. I mean, right? it, it so sounds like, like a lot of people are saying JJ is like <clears> the, <throat> the fourth quarterback for sure. Yeah. But again, when when do you see that fourth quarterback being taken? At, like after those top three, right? So it's like you see the top three, you'll probably see like four you just said players two, get. Though. What do you mean? You just said it's possible for JJ McCarthy to go yeah. too. Yeah. So if you okay, read so something, in, so in that scenario, right? So because the top three is always going to be quarterbacks, or at least that's kind of what we're sure. projecting. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then after that, four starting with the Cardinals, and then going down to, uh, if JJ's know, like taken seven in those top eight, three, right? I think it'll so be it's like four quarterbacks in a row. If JJ's taken in those top three, I'm almost convinced that the one team, unless will the go Cardinals really want Marvin Harris, yeah, and refuse to trade, uh, then they'll get taken. That's, what, that's yeah, what I'm saying. I mean, that wouldn't make sense. That wouldn't make sense for the Cardinals to ever get a quarterback in the fourth. Spot no, no, no. They trade. They trade him. That's what I'm saying. That's the world I just brought up. That the five pick would be a good move for the Vikings if it was only Drake May or Jaden Daniels that yeah. they felt value in. I agree. Mm. JJ, I think, is a waste. But no, I, I I'm 100 percent convinced the top four picks will be quarterback if they JJ uh, is in if JJ is taking that two or three. Because there are so many teams that need quarterbacks, whether it's, you know, I mean, Raiders signed Gardner Minshew, but they still need a key, I was going to say, I kind of like the Raiders trying to make a move. Well, it's Raiders, yeah. Broncos, and Vikings are all sitting there in that, like, yeah. 11 to 13 range, just like, we need a quarterback. And if you can get probably, on one of the for one of those teams, probably their number two quarterback on the board at you, four or five, they're, you're 100% <clears throat> going to get it. Do you like, guys see, like, the Giants or Titans making any move? Because they're kind of in, like, no man's land at six and seven, where, like, you can't, I mean. That's an interesting Giants, question. Giants, Giants have committed, though. Like, they've also committed the Titans, to Daniel Jones. Well, the like, Titans don't have Titans, anyone. So the Titans quarterback, yeah, like, like, it, sounds like, it sounds like the Titans are more secure with their quarterback than the Giants are yeah. right now. And because I've seen a lot of moves where the Giants – either trade down and select a quarterback in, like, the teens, whether that's, like, a Bo Nix or a Michael Penix or something, yeah, or just go ahead and draft one. Because I think they should. I don't think they should. I like Daniel Jones. I've been pretty vocal about that. But I think One of the few. I think there's a higher chance chance that the Giants go quarterback or make a move to go quarterback. The Titans Titans are not going quarterback. There's a 0% chance. They They are going going tackle. They are going to. Who uh, likes Will Levis? I mean, the if you watch the last yes. like year of football, Will Levis does something. The other Johns didn't do anything. One's worth five million. The other one's worth one hundred and forty million. Yeah, I mean, to be f- the yeah. Titans are in love with Will Levis. They just, I mean, they're getting. They him got him for nothing. I was you say they're getting him. They weapons. need a receiver. Yeah, they're gonna yeah. get him weapons. What do you mean? Didn't they just get Calvin? Yeah, well, they paid him one hundred and ten million a year. But, I mean, yeah. Yeah, Calvin Ridley and Hop. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Reliable they're getting for... they're getting him weapons, and all they need is offensive line in their mind. So I think this. Actually, Titans... I like Dallas Turner there. You don't think they should go offensive line? Just, yeah, no. You say screw no, offensive screw line. Screw it. Go the opposite side. I would side. almost if don't they, they don't trade Paul this pick. The if they don't trade this pick, I think there's a hundred percent chance yeah. they get up. They're already all in on offense. I think they are going to continue that. Probably get Joel. Yeah, if he's there. Fashani. Or for Shawnee. Yeah, like for Shawnee. Yeah, one of them. If he's there, for sure. No, but I like the. I think six and seven is really interesting too, because I don't think there's going to be much. I mean, Falcons at eight. You know, you're gonna. You're not gonna move. No, that's my boy. That's where Byron that's Murphy's boy. going. Byron yes. Murphy at eight. Jesus Christ. At the they eighth pick. Eighth pick in the NFL draft. I'll bet you any amount of money Byron Murphy doesn't go with eighth pick in the NFL draft. Are you give me odds. He's six. I'll give you five to one on He's any bet. I'll bet on the big board. Fifty bucks. Fifty bucks. Five to one. Ooh, that Brian Murphy goes top eight. But yeah. yes, wow. Byron. That's Byron. Not Do Brian. you want to make that bet too? Five to one. Yeah. All right. 50 cool. bucks? 50 bucks. Right. Wow. So Michael laid 100 to win 500 just now yeah. on Byron Murphy to go top eight. Currently number 16 player on the big board as a defensive tackle, which you usually don't see going Outplacing defensive very in. early. Latu Latu, Jer- Verse, and Turner. Dude, Latu Latu <laughs> is falling so far, and it not makes... Fall, not farther than him. Hey, hey, that's not true. Yeah, he's he ranked ahead of Byron Murphy. <laughs> 
Look at the mock draft. <laughs> I'm just looking at <laughs> No, no, no. Look at the mock <laughs> draft. Yeah, look at look look at the, the right draft. sources. Come on. JJ McCarthy at two. I'm literally <laughs> looking, no, at, I'm at, I'm I'm looking at the ESPN best think... available right He's now. got it right in front of him. Like, right in front of him. All I'm saying. Latu Latu is 14. No, no, no. Latu Latu is 19 to the Rams. It's okay, Mike. Please. It's okay. Please. Donations. Michael Donations. My favorite part of the show. No, I love it. I would love that. No, I, I just hit control that. C. Control <laughs> <A. laughs> Copy and paste. Control C, control P. I yeah. love that. Command X. No, that it doesn't get any more electric than my cut. <laughs> and just to finish the top ten, I mean, Bears at nine. Oh my uh, gosh. They have just anything. They Why do everything? everything? I feel they like this do. is receiver. Yeah. I feel like they could just whatever happens, they're just gonna roll with. You know what I mean? Like they're free rolling. Ooh, alt's moving down. Ooh, I want a receiver. Ooh, I want to move back no, and get Brian Thomas right. later. Ooh, this I is this is the most value spot because you get everyone in the world to jump up ahead of you and reach, and it's just You're what just top wait, player fell whatever in your the lap. best available. Ooh, Brock Bowers is here. And if they, Ooh, oh my god! I mean, Brock Bowers talk, is not going down. Talk about. But I'm saying if you just it wait. Nine, it's possible. If it goes four QBs, two wide receivers, and a offensive tackle, uh, offensive tackle, you know, maybe getting, like getting close. defensive. I think end. if Brock Bowers is there at eight, honestly, the Jets probably put a package together to go buy that eighth pick from the Falcons. I don't think That's what I'm saying. There's gonna be so many. I don't think they're gonna oh, let. This gonna be so electric. They're gonna let them fall. This might be the most electric draft I've ever seen in my life. Man, there's so much it, going on. If it goes the way I think it's gonna go, where yeah. everyone just every other pick's gonna be like, we gotta move, or we gotta go back, or we gotta do da da da. No, yeah. it's gonna be electric. Everyone's right. gonna eat where, each other. Wait, wait, wait really quick. Where do you think Nate Wiggins is going? Speak because Clemson dude, he's been getting and your boy. shit on. Yeah, but I think I, they have him going in like the twenties something. Really? Because he was doing really well. Disrespectful in the early mocks. Well, like he was it's the same thing that happens. They have Just they look something in the face, and they're like, wow, this guy's like it's unbelievably fast and played perfect all season long. And then they're like, or we can get someone Ooh, from wide receiver. Or we can get someone from Toledo. <laughs> hey, hey, like, he's no, no, good. Literally, like, like Mel Kuyper slides in on this <laughs> one. Yeah, hey, seven wide receivers really. in the top Have you seen picks? this D2 quarterback <laughs> in Montana State? <laughs> Let me tell you something. <laughs> no, literally every year. But yeah, there's your top five. There, there's your top ten. We talked about the Jets moving up and all that. So now I kind of want to go into prospects. We were talking all the teams. Now I want to talk our top ten prospects. All right, we just went through the top picks in the draft, uh, kind of saying what we think the teams are going to do, how oh, yeah. we think the actual draft's going to fall. But often, you know, we don't always agree with how the teams are drafted. And we're normally yeah. right. Yeah, and we've been we're more sure. we've been more right than not when yeah. it comes to a lot of these. Right Shout out Mel Kuyper. So uh, yeah, Mel Kuyper. I mean that guy. <laughs> what a com- I guess anyone could be better. I feel than like him. he just like runs Mr. the NFL Kuyper. cabal. Like he just like decides for the league what's gonna happen. Like the Zach Wilson thing still the go for a good cabal. Ever. He's right the puppet. Now. He's the greatest. No, he's literally the puppet master. Yeah. Like it's like the Illuminati. He's just in charge. He just arbitrarily decided one day that the quarterback from BYU is getting taken second overall. Yeah, <laughs> and the league had to listen because he was mock drafted. They were like Mitch Trubisky quarterback from like North Carolina. Yeah, like all right, well this guy said no, something. They were they so good. The teams didn't want to do it, and then he they have him on NFL every single day for two and a half months going. This guy is great. If you great. don't draft him too, and then these GMs are like, dude, what the? Fuck? Like, <laughs> I don't want to do this. They're again. telling their coaches. The coaches are like. Listen, we actually like no football. Like, don't worry. And then the GM's just like losing his mind. He's like, no, but Mel's on. Yeah, TV. Mel Kiefer's <laughs> off his third hour all the day, fucking tweaking, just like looking around. He's like, no, no, no. Let me tell you, he's just like this guy, <laughs> just tweaking. Pro build. Yeah, <laughs> real intelligent guy. Uh, Sits in the pocket like you never. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, we don't always agree with Mel Kiefer. No, never. I want to hear our top ten players. So this is, you know, these could be guys going. In the 30s, oh, 40s. Don't get me started now. I'm assuming that some of mm-hmm. Ryan's picks are going to be there, too. Sharp. Mario, I'm starting with Sharp. you here. Give me your Mario top 10 on the big board. Yeah. Mario's big board. This is going to be electric. <laughs> well, uh, I've been pretty vocal about who I think the best uh, quarterback is. That's an understatement. Yep. Uh, no bias at all, because you won't tell us you. Uh, it's going to be Jaden Daniels at one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no surprises there. Uh, two and three, you can decide, you know, it's preference between Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. Jesus. That would be sharp. No I'm way. not that sharp, though. There's no, no, no. way. I, 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 I'd be realistic. Uh, no, number two, I got Jared Verse. Uh, I just love defensive Ooh. ends. So I like Jared Verse up there. Yeah, I have him, and then right after, uh, Liatu Latu. Um, oh, that's my I just, boy. Yeah, I, I just, big fans of both of them, honestly. I thought they both performed well in college, and I just, that position historically in drafts usually pans out pretty Can't well. Can't miss. It, um, it, what's kind of funny about those real quick is also at some point in the year they were projected as like a one or two overall guy. No, yeah. I think like, they both were projected like pre- ones in the last no, like, yeah. and a half. Like preseason it was like, oh, Jared Verse might be the one overall and then like early Lottu season when La Tu La Tu started going crazy, like, oh, he might be the number one pick. Yeah. So recently because of the whole mock draft shit, they've fallen. And quarterbacks. You're and saying value. Receivers. Value, value, value. Value. Yeah. Um, at number four, I got Joe Walt. 
Uh, again, no surprise there. That's kind of another like pretty stable. Can't miss. Yeah, mm-hmm. kind of can't miss Those position. Notre Dame tackles. Uh, number five, I went Marvin Harrison just because I think he is that good of a receiver. Um, he's he's just a freak. He just reminds me of Julio Jones, like his size, his yeah, speed. Do everything. Um, number six, this is a uh, probably an interesting one, probably a little high uh, compared to your guys' list. If he's in your top ten, uh, I really like Brock Bowers. I have him at six. I think for his position, like. There's such a big discrepancy between like him and then the next best tight end. I oh, just yeah. think he just does everything. Um, kind of reminds me of like all those years in fantasy, like when Travis Kelsey's just like would t- be wide receiver, the first round. Yeah. would be like wide receiver three or four, mm-hmm. and then like the next best tight end is like would be like wide receiver like thirty. Yeah, yeah. like I think he's he has that kind of potential. Uh, number seven, I have Dallas Turner. Uh, I just last the last of uh, Nick Saban's class yep um you know he's coached well and i mean bama defense i mean bama players in general they always do well. they yeah, no matter do where well. they go bama players nick saban players yeah. bama defense then it goes bama edge rusher like yeah is all i mean just checks all the boxes yeah. uh number eight i have the Shwanu. uh again i just think it's, it's kind of safe but i mean him and joe walt i think yeah they're unbelievable he's so good they, they got to be inside your time uh inside your top 10 Number nine, interesting one. This will probably shock a lot of you guys. Um, I have Bo Nix. Ain't shocking me, baby. I know. I people like are warming that. up. That's like QB2. That. People are like warming that. up. QB2. Like They're that. warming up. QB2, Bo Nix. Wow. I like um, that. Y- listen, listen. I've said a lot of things about Bo Nix. Um, a lot. And I, I've seen a lot of Bo Nix. You, oh, hate, no. you hated Bo Nix with way, me the way, entire oh, yeah. season. Way too many. I've seen way too many years of Bo Nix at Auburn, at Oregon, at uh, the dude was trash. But trash. listen, you play college for seven Come years, on. eight years, nine years. I mean, he was half a decade. He, I mean, decade. he's coming in as a veteran at this <laughs> yeah. point. Uh, he qualifies for Social Security in three seasons. Yeah. So, um, no, I just really, really think, like, in terms of, like, the jumps you have to make at the pro level, like, sure, like, freak athleticism works. But even, like, you look at the freak athletes like Anthony Richardson, like, you still, like, Okay, yeah, they have all the physical tools. Like, do they have it upstairs mentally? And I just, I really think, like, someone who's just accurate, like, you kind of know, like, what they're going to be. Mm-hmm. And I think him, as well as, like, his athleticism, I know J.J. McCarthy's kind of similar, but I think Bo's a little bit thicker, a little bit tougher. Um, and I just think he's a little older. And you got him at two for your quarterbacks. So, yeah. And then uh, number 10, uh, I have the most underrated player in this draft, Michael Penix. Wow. Oh, wow. So you don't have Caleb, Caleb Williams or Drake May in your top 10. Caleb, Caleb's 11. <laughs> He's almost there. Just for spite. Yeah. Honorable mention, <laughs> uh, Caleb brutal. 11. Honorable mention, Malik Neighbors at 12. Wow. Wow. Mal- Caleb Malik, was almost there. Malik Neighbors outside the top 10 also is kind of not an LSU homer thing because a lot of boards have him, you know, top five, five. on their page. Yeah, I have them. So, yeah. All I right, just cool. think That's... all these players would probably. Oh, uh, I agree. I they they make an impact moments. versus Malik Neighbors, as talented as he is. Um, you need he needs a quarterback to throw him yeah. the ball. Uh, obviously Marvin too, but I think Marvin's just that much better than every other receiver. Mm-hmm. That's so. fair. He had Honda McCord. Mike said, <laughs> Mike, you just said that uh, you have Neighbors very high. I mean, relative to that, yeah. I mean, he's in my top ten. Like right. he'll he'll make. Let's the hear list. the top ten. Um, all right. So starting off, I'm going to go with Drake May, number one. Think he's the best player. Uh, two, shout oh, out Mario. Can I pause real quick? Sure, sure, sure. Do you remember the last time fact, we did top ten? Four, fact. Oh yeah, I I, I so switch around. The first time we did a top ten rankings list, Drake, Drake May, May was number was two. Num- he was I think he was one or two for you. He was two because I had to put Caleb Williams one. Okay, I was forced. Your most recent one before this. Oh, I put him at six. You had him as your four. quarterback four. Yeah, yeah, four quarterback six, four. Something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like I think pick, pick eight or nine. Yeah, something like that. Now he's pick one. Yeah, pick one. What did you see in the last couple weeks that sold you on him? Did you see his well, combine? Okay. No, what was it? No, no, no. See, <laughs> good pro I'm, day. You had a no, good no. pro day. I'm not a fan of Caleb Williams, so I think that's just, like, irrelevant. I, like, I don't know what people see in him. I don't like him as a person, so I think that plays into your factor. Add to the Michael hate list. God, we need oh, to. Oh, yeah, no, no, it's definitely, it's definitely <laughs> out. There. I would think you'd be a big fan of him. Like, he has the pink phone case, the painted nails. That yeah, that kind of makes you. Neon me... pink. Never mind. I, I'm the not, he's not the type I'm of guy. I'm not likes. getting a strike. Not getting a strike. He's not um, the type of guy Mike likes. No. <laughs> Pause. Time Ruby, out. Resume. Cancel. Hey, resume. <laughs> Start. Cancel. Um, if you only saw what I saw. Control. Anyways, no, I think, I think Drake May is extremely talented. Um, when we're. 
talking about like kind of the list that that goes into. So it's like him, Jane Daniels. Uh, speaking of Jane Daniels is my number two. The reason why I have him above is solely for the fact that I think, in my opinion, Jane Daniels had better weapons on his team. So it kind of like helps him look a little bit better, if that makes sense. Um, whereas Definitely Drake may, the numbers. yeah. And so Drake may kind of worked with a lot less and still produce, yeah. <clears throat> produce excellent numbers, like produce hey, an excellent nice. record. Don't sleep on Ted. Yeah. I'm half of the uh, season. But yeah. I mean, yeah. But still, I mean, so that that's why I have it um, in that order. Number three, I'm going to go Joe Alt. Joe Alt is just, I mean, he's excellent. He's by by far the best offensive tackle that you're going to get. Uh, four is going to be Marvin Harrison Jr. Shout out Ryan and shout out Cameron Kev. He is clearly the best receiver. Uh, number five, I'm going to go Dallas Turner above Jared Verse. Uh, I hate Bama. Shout out Saban. I hate you. I, I hate, hate Bama. I hate Bama. Shout out Saban. <clears throat> but I hate Saban. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Good thing he's retired. Yeah. So you I love mean, Bama now. He might die. Um, sorry. That... Strike. No, 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 no. Yeah. I was avoiding, I was avoiding strikes this no. whole episode. You can't. I was avoiding strikes this whole episode. You can't get a strike not a and strike. say I was avoiding not a strike. strikes. Not a strike. You but can't just sell. No, I was wasn't. Taking I'm not balls. doing strikes no, you got a strike. I'm not doing strikes today. No strikes today. No strikes. Give him a strike. All right. So no strikes. Uh. Shout out Dallas Turner. I'm taking you at five. Number six. <laughs> what? Go, 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 go. Go. All right. Number six. All right. Number six is probably where I would go Malik Neighbors. Uh Same big fan of him. Think okay. he think he's great. And also, I mean, it's kind of kind of contradictory, but like although Jane Daniels had excellent weapons, and obviously they go hand in hand. So I'm not too sure how good Malik Neighbors is or would be without Jane Daniels, right? But given that's not the scenario that we're in, and we can only go off what we saw, I'm gonna go. Sorry, I'm gonna go Neighbors. <laughs> Taking Mario, punching Tyler. I'm over yeah. here, Mike. I'm over here. Yeah. Hey, I'm you too far away. I have short arms. Uh, number. That's not all that short. <laughs> that's in- inappropriate. Hair. Inappropriate. <laughs> He's not- got a haircut. Let's not keep it above the table. Not appropriate. Yeah. Uh, keep it above the table. It's above ground now. What am I on? Seven. Yeah, you're yeah, on seven. You're on All seven. right. You just ripped the neighbors at six. <clears throat> yeah. Seven, I'm going to go Jared Verse. Uh, he really showed up and showed out the last two games without a quarterback. And so, I mean, he's he's insane. Number eight, shout out my boy, Byron Murphy. I think Byron Murphy's going right to make it. Right at the eight spot, just enough. Right, right, <laughs> right where he wants him. Right where he wants him. Just enough to win the bet. Yeah. <laughs> bang, right there. Bang, bang. Respect that. I respect that. Bang, bang, bang. bang. <laughs> you got to stick to your guns there. I like <laughs> Big guns over here. Zero error for Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Zero margin um, for error. Nine is going to be right. Fishwanu. Yeah. <laughs> like Mario said, a little bit safe, but it is who it is. And number 10, the last of the diddly dallies. Uh, I had it. I lost it. It'll come to me. Wait, are, I, is he on nine or ten? He might be on ten. He's on ten. No, I was on. I was on ten. Oh, Brock. Sorry, Brock. Oh, Brock, 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 Brock is ten. There you go. Brock is ten. Sorry. He might have said eleven names there. I don't know. We'll see. No, no, no. We'll see after the ball. No, no, no. No, he's good. Who was your nine? I'm sorry, I missed that. Fashanu or Fashanu? Yeah. yeah. Fashanu nine, and then what's his name? Uh, might have been eleven names. Yeah. Uh, Brock. Yeah. Bro, bro. There he is. There he is. The ones. I was gonna let you come to it. All right, my Bowers, uh, Mr. Bowers. My top ten has shifted a lot in the last couple weeks. As much as mine. I don't remember what yours was before. I mean, I'm Me consistent either. at the top of the draft. Wait, can I say one thing? Yeah. I, yeah. I wanted to hold it in. I really tried, Mike. Oh yeah. But yeah. we were talking about the Chargers picking a player. Yeah. At five. Yeah. And the player you named, did you know you said? You said Roma Dunze. Yeah. And. Malik Neighbors, you didn't Wait. want to pick, and then Malik Neighbors, you said at six, and you, you didn't really pick like Roma Dunze Dunze in the top ten. I just had to get it off. It might have been just a slip up, and you don't like Rome as much. Wasn't a or no. You just wanted to. You thought Roma Dunze instead of Malik Neighbors <laughs> hey, instead. No, no. We like. Every, I mean, I think thought, Tyler prefaced it is that our lists don't always match up with how. Five seconds. Like, okay, I didn't know if it was know, like at least a week. Just because uh, just because the NFL doesn't agree with me doesn't mean that no, all I'm wrong. Every sentence Mike says, it's like it's like starting a completely new one. There's no <laughs> correlation. <laughs> it's just like blank slate, and then just like you put the pencil down on the paper, and it's like. Let boom. That-
Okay. And then you start drawing the line. The page and then you is over. It just boom. Go the page on. is over. The page is over. Yeah. It's a new page. Yeah, it's a new page. No, yeah. But I, d- I did notice that you know very we were talking J.J. McCarthy at two, Romo Dunes at five. Neither of those appeared in the top. <laughs> it was very, it was but interesting. That's fine. I mean, I don't like J.J. No, I I just think I think he, we're good. Yeah, I think we're good. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah. I'm pretty consistent uh, at the top of my list. Uh, I've had Drake May at one yeah. since Power. college football. After college football, currently he's not gonna get picked one. I think he's the best player in the class by far. My number two is gonna be Caleb Williams. Thank you. Oh, I nice um, <laughs> I, you know, I'm not a huge fan of Caleb Williams, but no one had him in his top five. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, like we you, watched him play college listen, football. Listen, the guy's all, unbelievably talented. No, 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 I he was right there. He was number eleven. <laughs> <laughs> Honorable mention. Mike, Mike, wasn't, was not a trick. Mike wasn't he, gonna put him in the first. He round. wasn't in the he's top not, ten. Not, not my first. No, round. Caleb. I mean, it's like it's like you know, it's like Josh Allen for Tyler. You know. No, don't even get me started on Josh Allen. We, we don't need to bring up Josh play. Allen on this episode. He might be worse. I hate him. Um, no, Caleb is number two. He number two or eleven? You know, I mean, he was the Heisman two years ago. Two or twenty-two. I don't think he's a winner, but his talent is crazy. His upside is ridiculous. Yeah. If, if he gets, you know, if he's coached well, yeah. put in a good spot, which the Bears is an insane spot to get drafted. I think he's gonna do very well. Caleb's my number two. My number three, staying consistent here as well as Dallas Turner. Uh, I think he is the scariest defensive player in this class. I don't think you can miss with edge rushers. We kind of talked about it with Mario. I think he's just a cannot miss, change your defense type of player. Like one yeah. of those in four years when they give him his extension, they're going to re-sign him for one of those you know 150 plus yeah. million yeah. dollar deals. Uh, number four is Joe Alt. We've already talked about it. Yeah, everything about Joe Alt is awesome. I don't think he gets drafted at four. It probably goes like five or six, which is just value. Um, my number five is got to be. Wide receiver one, Marvin Harrison. I'm not a fan of drafting receivers aside, but he's so much better than everyone else. It's like bang. everyone yeah. else at wide receiver. He's an instant, you know, game changing player, especially if he goes to the right spot as well. So I just think you're not going to be able to pass up on him um, <clears throat> if he falls to you in a good spot. Number six this is where I get a little fun with it. Mm. Um, a little fancy in the pantsy. I'm going Brock Bowers at number six now. Ooh. He wasn't in my top ten, either my first top ten list. Put him Neither in the top, top ten. He banging f- in. He was my favorite college player besides Drake May in actual college. And for some reason, I just couldn't get my head around why a team would draft a tight end that high. But the more I look at it, I think he's so much more than a tight end. He can, He's such a good blocker. He can line up wide and play wide receiver. So, like... I, and I, when I was thinking about putting, putting wide receivers in my top 10, I was like, where do I put Neighbors? Where do I put Odunze? And I looked at him, I was like, I think Brock Bowers is way better than both of those guys. So why in the world am I having these wide receivers drafted ahead of Brock Bowers when he can play wide receiver and tight end? Yeah. So yeah, I have Brock <clears throat> Bowers at six. Um, my number seven is going to be Jaden Daniels. I was not, he wasn't in my top 10 on either of my first lists, but I do respect how absurd his stats were in college. He is the current Heisman quarterback. Um, I think seven's a relatively safe spot for QB three. We see quarterbacks going one, two, three, and like a fifth, a fourth quarterback going like five or six. Never. I works. think if you're getting the current Heisman quarterback at the seven spot, you know you're not really reaching on him that much. It's not like getting the seven picks that much of a crazy high draft capital because compared to the one or two, what yeah. those go for. And you know, he does remind me a lot of <clears throat> like Lamar Jackson with a slightly better arm and slightly less athletic but slightly better arm. Who knows what he can turn into? I like my shots there. Um, eight's got to be Jared Verse. I, I like going back to defense here. And then my nine is Nate Wiggins. Not biased at all. I'm say, You're seeing quarter, cornerbacks. You have Terrion Arnold here at 12, yeah. Quinion Mitchell at 10. And they're putting, they're putting a bunch of corners at like this 10, 12, 14 that range. 10 to 15 yeah. range, yeah. Nate Wiggins was the best corner in college football last year. At one point, people were saying Kool-Aid McKinstry was the best corner. Now he's nowhere near it, and all of a sudden, Terry and Arnold popped up out of nowhere and just went into the top 10. Yeah. He's good all season. During the season, they weren't saying he was corner one on his team. No. All of a sudden, he's cornerback one in the country, and then they have the guy from Toledo, Quinion Mitchell, <coughs> barely played any hard receivers or quarterbacks all season long Yeah. and looked good. I mean, like, Sauce Gardner was on Cincinnati. Yeah, it was an, e- hard, it was an easy team, but they played in the playoffs. They played in tough bowl games. You saw him against good competition. Toledo played nobody, yeah. and Quinion Mitchell just, like, locked up nobody and all of a sudden he's top 10 pick no i don't think so nate wiggins was doing this at the highest level for three years fastest corner in the draft second fastest player overall in the nfl draft class i love him at nine and then number 10 uh, i don't want to have to do it but i'm gonna have to do it 
Uh, I got to go Latu Latu. I think – so I really don't think he should fall to 10. But something – in I feel like he's either the best player in the class or the worst player in the class. I For some reason, I feel like he's the easiest bust. I don't know why in my brain I think that. Uh, for some – like I always say that positions it can't miss – but there has to be something I'm missing for why he's going this far down the draft. Yeah, like what? What is? What is it? People are just pumping offenses here. Yeah, I, mean, I guess. But it feels doesn't it feel weird that there are people like mock drafting him in the twenties, in the mid twenties. It's like verse, same reason. Like verse was drafted. It like just 14. feels. But I feel like I've seen it with verse. Like verse, you know, he played at Florida State. He played in huge games. UCLA That's didn't fair. play in any hard game. I mean, they played in the Pac-12. Mm-hmm. You know, he did well at the beginning of the year, but he didn't play in any bowl games, anything like that. Like Jared Verse, we've seen him go against top tier players. I don't know. I think he is, should be a top ten pick, but this is just my my red flag. Maybe an all star. Maybe just a complete like who <coughs> is that in five years? Who who do is this guy? Yeah, it's, I like that. We have a very similar list, Tyler. We did kind of. Yeah. I just I don't know. I feel I feel like I'm reaching a little on the Liatu Latu, the Nate Wiggins, and the Brock Bowers aspects of things, but at the same time, we had Brock at the same spot. I, well, I just love taking the best players. Yeah. Like, I don't like reaching on other players because of positions. I'm like, dude, best tight end, best receiver, best... Uh, that's kind of how I went on that. Yeah. yeah. Mine's going to be ugly as hell, but <clears throat> ugly wins you NFL drafts. Pretty doesn't. Um, number one, I will not go against it. I've been saying it every single NFL draft. It's Joe Alt. Joe Alt. By a mile. I mean, if you want someone to step in and change your entire offensive line, where other defensive tackles have to play against you, where your run game gets to go, where your quarterback gets more time to pass... Like, Everything gets better. Joe Alt is going to come here, come in, dominate immediately. There's nothing to it. I have no. There's the only player that I have just no worry about. He doesn't yeah. need a quarterback to throw to him. He doesn't need time to wait or like understand yeah. an offense. Like he's going to go and be perfect immediately. At number two, this guy actually switched. I had this guy as the third defensive event, or defensive player, but I Dallas Turner. I watched <coughs> his combine and scary. He was just a freak, yeah. and I'm. I, I really didn't have any reason to go against him. I just His name wasn't popped up in that Bama defense so much because they have so much players mm-hmm. on that defense. But I like him at two. I think he's going to go – I think will be very good. At yeah. three, I'm then going verse. Another thing, like we've been saying, defensive player will never not pan out yeah. in yeah. the NFL. And he proved unbelievably time I was going to say, he's already time. so good. Oh, like, at, time after time, all he did was prove – He carried that defense. How talented he was. Five sacks in one game. And then yeah, as my reach – that uh, you you said it was a reach for you. I have Latu Latu at four. I think he's an absolute freak. What that was just on a team that was terrible. Yeah, that like, could that could be it. He like, could be a steal at like anywhere in the draft. He just it was the team oh, was bad. I just think but, there was nothing on that team that could possibly help him on both sides of the ball, whether it was defense or offense. Yeah. It was just if he if they lost by forty, there's nothing he's gonna do. If he mm-hmm. if it's a close game and they still lost, he's the reason why they almost won. Yeah. And they were just a terrible team. So. That's the reason my f- he's gonna be in my four. I'm um, going Marvin Harrison at five. It's pretty much the same around yeah, the board. Yeah. He's just four the best wide receiver in the draft. <clears throat> he's the best offensive player, immediate immediate impact in the draft besides I think Joe Alt. So I think <clears throat> he's gonna come in ball for whoever teams if it is the Chargers they want to have that wide receiver one or the Cardinals if it's at four. I think that's just the best pick ever. Um, I moved it up a little bit. Caleb Williams is now my sixth instead oh, of QB seven. One. He's QB, <coughs> he's I moved him as that my was a shift as well. No, no, shift behind Drake May. Yeah. Uh, Caleb Williams is my six. I just think talent wise, I don't. Maybe it's the freaking hate that everyone's been shitting on him for. I think it is. That I think, makes I think me that's give what makes the you juice. Like him more. Yeah. But like, I I just hate when like someone gets shit on that isn't their straight talent. When week seven weeks into the season, before he started painting his nails and crying on the sideline, everyone was watching him going, "Holy fucking shit, this guy's yeah out of this." C-. Then he lost games. <laughs> out of his what? Out of his. C-. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you want me to repeat it one more time? No, I think one we have to bleep that. I think we have to bleep that. We have to bleep that. He was playing out of his. <laughs> it's definitely have to be bleeped. And <laughs> no, they're not gonna hear it. I'm just getting out no, of okay. his rooster. He out of play- his Johnson. He's yeah. just you know he's he was playing. He's unbelievably he's talented. Jackson. Yeah. He's unbelievably he's talented. Diddy. <laughs> he's no, unbelievably no did he? No, 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 he's unbelievably talented on a team that was terribly terrible. terribly overrated <clears throat> like people thought because they started well and they had a chance to win the Pac-12 that this team was anything no it was Caleb Williams Sorry, that was it Lincoln Riley literally yeah. I mean all it was just Caleb Williams I think he's a stud I think he should be drafted higher at number seven I have Fashanu I just think once again a guy you put in immediately all Penn State <clears throat> did was run the ball Jarrell Arden barely threw and they contended in the Big Ten 
for the whole season. They yeah. lost two. The only two yeah. games they lost were to Ohio State, and Michigan. Um, number eight. This is a little a little switch up for me because I didn't have my top ten. I'm giving Brock Bowers the nod. It's hey, hard. It's hard. He's moved up everyone's draft boards. It's hard for me. I just think um, all these other wide receivers need to be f- weighed down. Brock Bowers is a guy that immediately can come in and change a team because the tight end position is so hard to guard. That was my logic. Unlike yeah, a wide receiver. That. So I think he'll be able to come in and a, a team like the Jets <coughs> that don't really need anything besides just who do we who do we want? Yeah. That would be a good fill-in spot for him. Um, number nine, th- this hurts. Changed my mind. It's so close. I have Quinion Mitchell now as my cornerback one from Toledo. I had Nate Wiggins all year. Th- this guy is so tall, long, fast, and just absurd. And you say he didn't play anything. I watched one game last year from him. I've only watched him play one game. It was against Marvin Harrison. And Marvin Harrison actually, he just had, I think he only had like two touchdown catches, but didn't have like the 150 yards in the game. Yeah. So I just think he's actually very good. I don't think, I think Nate Wiggins goes at 9 or 11, I would be like, okay, I'm yeah. perfectly fine. Love it. But Quinion at 9, I just love him. <laughs> wait, and then, wait, wait, wait. He didn't play Marvin Harrison last year. Toledo didn't play Ohio State. No, they played Illinois, Texas Southern, San Jose State, <coughs> WMU, don't even know who that is, mm. Northern Illinois, UMass, Woo-hoo. Ball State, Miami, Ohio, Buffalo, Eastern Michigan, Bowling Green, Central Michigan, Miami, Ohio, and Wyoming in the Arizona Bowl. Was it AK? Maybe it was two years ago. That's, I thought it was for sure last year. But regardless, I watched. It was. They lost 77 to 21, September 17th, wow. 2022. Yeah, it was two years ago. They played two years ago. All right. Yeah, wow. yeah, but All right. I, he played really well. No, he played really well. That's because I, because when I was talking about him saying they didn't play anyone, I was like, I definitely looked at their schedule and they had no ranked opponent. So oh, when no, you said yeah, they played Ohio State, I was like, what the? Heck? It was two There's years no ago. But that was the only game I watched out of him, and okay, he played fair. really well. He played really well. Fair. The rest of the team was terrible. And then number ten is just, I mean. <clears throat> Oh, it's dude, it's, I can't dis- No, no, I just can't disrespect Jay Drake Daniels. May. I can't there just drop. Is, I can't drop off Drake May. I still think he's very talented. I just don't <clears> think <throat> these quarterbacks are as good as people think. I even. I mean, Thanks. I'm. I. I. I'm not crazy. Caleb is the number one pick. I have him at uh, six. I think. So I just think like, yes, six. He has the highest up, like highest ceiling. I just think that. I don't know. Drake May, is, he just looks like quarterback. You know what I mean? No. He's the number two. He looks like quarterback. He's so good. He looks like quarterback. He's so good. He's That's number, it. That's a rounded out. Looks like a franchise quarterback. Well, no yeah, backwards but, hat, you know? Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Forward, uh, Colin, no, he wears a suit, you He's know? look you in your eye, shake your hand, say, like, you know, first and ten. Looks yeah, like the other guy height. has a gang of squatters, and, you know, he's... Who's the other guy? Where were you what? going with that? What was you? No, I mean, he's Who's the other guy? hoodlums. Who? Hood rats Who? and who's who? who are we talking Kale, about? Caleb Williams. Oh, he's hanging out with hood rats. Well, I mean, hood rats. Isn't a fifty thousand? That's not the nice rats. thing to call the Chicago Bears. No, okay. hood rats yeah. and the <laughs> artist up. folk, you know, of the the blue haired tribes, artist folk. So how many strikes do you want this episode? No, like, you name to... it, we give it to you, Mike. Just... How many do you want? The guy struck out, right? I mean, holy shit! I'm not bowling. I'm gonna move on. Our podcast yeah. is <laughs> like driving a car, and Mike's the driver, and he goes, "Hey, look, there's a cliff. Let's drive on it." Like, no, yeah, he's just scenery. Like, like you just know he didn't hear a word Ryan said. No, no and I then always, as soon as he was done, he you, just starts, you know he was just like staring at the wall somewhere. He goes, yeah. Like, like, why would I want to yeah, be with him? No, is this is this is what happens every episode. If you you're a return watcher, this is nothing new to you. If you're a welcome. new watcher, welcome to the show. Welcome welcome to the show. show. Yes. All right, there's there's our rankings. I, I feel like casa. those are a little s- more solid than you know the Mel Kuypers of the world. Oh, I feel like listen to these. A little yeah. more locked down. Yeah, if you're drafting Pittsburgh Steelers, listen to what we're saying. Shout us out also. Shout us out. Yeah, yeah. let us everywhere. know what Go you think. Um, I got a couple more questions, and then we're going to wrap this up. All right, a few last questions before... We sign off and then go watch the draft because oh, I can't wait to actually see what happens. It's Explosion! Up. It's a good Thursday. I'm gonna explode. I'm gonna. S- <laughs> we're going Everywhere. biggest. We're going biggest Pause. sleeper first, and I think Who's Mario, it? you included your biggest sleeper in your top ten, I if did. I'm not mistaken. I did. So go ahead and shine some more light on that. <clears throat> I included uh, my biggest sleeper, which is Michael Penix. Um, I just, <laughs> yeah, he had Ruma Dunze, but like, if you just watched that Washington team last year, like he single handedly carried that team to a natty. Totally. You know what I mean? And obviously, yeah, they were outmatched uh, when it got to the big uh, the big game. But I just think, I don't know. I feel like people are just kind of like taking what he did, like an entire body of work. Like it wasn't like one or two games or, you know, he started out hot and then fell off. Like he was just good 
the entire time, when the big moments came, he rose up to the occasion every single time, like willed his team to a national championship. It's unbelievable. And, and then people just kind of go like, yeah, no, it's cool, but like, J.J. McCarthy. Like, oh, you know, or like, I don't I don't know. Like, they just kind of like throw him like to the side and be like, oh, yeah, like, that was cool, but... Yeah. And they're just kind of overlooking him. I it's, think, I think you're going to steal that, yeah. wherever he goes because, I, I mean, mock drafts have him going like the 15 to like 25 range. And I just think like, I mean, if you get him anywhere like around the 20 spot or even lower, I think yeah. you're just getting, Heavy. I mean, you're kind of free rolling your this quarterback. I, I oh, agree completely. I love a good free roll. I, lo- I mean, I love Michael Penix so much. I yeah. couldn't put him in my top 10, but I think he's a first round quarterback, much more so than J.J. Uh, well, I was actually kind of surprised when you and Ryan had this guy in his list. And so he, he was actually my sleeper of Liatu Latu, um, just because on, I think the big board, he's, he's definitely outside the top 10. Yeah. He's at least um, like 16. <clears throat> exactly. Traps, I'm in the twenties. Yeah. And, uh, you kind of touched on it as well when you were talking about him, but I mean, this guy, I guess is, has the ability to just bust and fall off a cliff and everyone's wrong. Um, but I mean, I think at least for his. Position. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to just move along. Yeah, keep going, Mike. Going. I tried. I tried. I tried. Off the cliff. This guy just really has the ability. Great way to go out. Great way to go Great way to go out. Let me keep, tell you. Keep going. Keep yeah, going. but uh, regardless, if you're like, busting while you're falling off a cliff. All right, that's, all right, that's, that's a strike. That's a one. That's a strike. strike. Jesus Christ! This is a big show. Just bleep it. Just bleep <laughs> it. <laughs> no, show. no, 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 no. That's a strike. You can uh, add subtitles to that. <laughs> <laughs> in All languages for you. Don't worry. Go uh, ahead, Mike. Korean. Sorry. No, Two. No, no. <laughs> Wait, what? Um. Uh. Wow, you really derailed me. Um, <laughs> what do you mean by that? that? <laughs> what do you mean by that? that, Mike? I got come derailed. On, come on now. I got derailed. <laughs> um, it's a picture, Mike. Let's bring it back. You want to put? Yeah. You want to put? Above He's gonna bust. Keep it on the team. He, he could possibly no, be the he biggest bust in your life. Bust. But again, I think <laughs> he could be a, he could be a bus. He could bus, and he, like, and he could be my biggest bus of all time. The verbiage, like Michael just Ray. adding a, a, a. This guy, let me tell you something. This guy could bust, <laughs> but he railed me, and, <laughs> and he was my biggest bus of my life. Come on, big bus. He come on. Derailed me. I just wanted a sleeper. Dude, he was sleeping with the. He's sleeping with the big. Cliff. You said that. Those are your words. No, 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 no. Anyways, uh, he could be a bust. Okay, he could he could be a bust. He could be a bust, but I don't think he will. I think he has great potential, and especially in that position, it. <laughs> <laughs> that's on. That's that's just on me, cause my brain is on me. That's that was on me. That was on me. I'm that sorry. Was Mike. Keep it rolling. Keep it rolling. I'm just saying. Keep it rolling. It's it's Trent. This is gonna sound. <laughs> All right, we got it. We do a picture. Sorry, you just, everything you start is it's trans and then you just you turn it off. <laughs> uh, it's a big show. Mike, come on now. Wrap it up, Mike. Come on. His position translates into the NFL. Translates. There we go. Yeah, Love yeah. that. All right. All right Crazy all right. spot to cut that off in the word. I mean, it's not... <laughs> his position trans. His position trans. <laughs> Oh, wow. Beautiful set. So, Beautifully said, Mike. Lie to lie to. <laughs> He's who you're sleeping There we go. All right. Yeah. We're moving. We got we're moving. Matt. I'm going oh. deep sleeper, and I'm doing a homer pick. He's moving. Um, Rook Aroraro. That's a real name. <laughs> Scoop- <laughs> I mean, now we're just like, Scooby-Doo right there. <laughs> now we're just making uh, things up. Row. No. I'm not. So he's ranked. Uh, oh. AM is the 10th defensive tackle. He's for out of Clemson. He was a senior. What's his name again? Rook Arororo. I'll Rook? spell it for you. Arororo. You can throw it up right here. Oh, no, no, no. R U K E. Last name O R H O R H O R O. That's actually how you pronounce it. Arororo. Arororo. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a mouthful. But he's uh, he's projected. He's oh. the 88th. <laughs> But it's so- okay. Right. What do you think about Mike? No, this I man's don't. reaching over here. I'm trying to get through something. No, Ryan had a little face, and now it's like, hey. You're looking at Ryan's face. Oh. Are we gonna let him make a pick, Mike? <laughs> it's in the no, they have him ranked as the uh, 88th overall prospect. So that's whoa, like, whoa, 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 whoa. Sit up, Mike. It's an end of Focus. the third round type player. Um, I watched him at Clemson. He was. You know, especially towards the end of the season, one of our best defensive players by far, besides Nate, besides Nate Wiggins. Nate? Um, all of our linebackers got the hype, whether it was Barrett Carter, who returned for his senior year, or Jeremiah Trotter. But this guy is an absolute monster on the D-line. He 
his combine was like out of this world. He, I think his vertical was something like 37 inches or something for freaking defensive tackle, which is like disgusting. Fat men can jump. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> I don't know. I watched him play for four years, and I think a team that gets him in the third round, you could get yourself like a future you know, pro bowler starter on that. So he's my deep sleeper. I didn't want to go with anyone we talked about. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I didn't really count this as a sleeper, and then I just watched him get crippled in this draft. Mm-hmm. But um, Cooper DeJean for Iowa, yeah. I mean – he was Mr. Dijon. I was like when I was thinking like I was like oh Nate Wiggins was my cute quarterback one but like Cooper Dijon's really good he's right there. I mean, I was literally name of their game was defense yeah. all yeah. year. He's unbelievable as a cornerback and he's so athletic. I last time <clears throat> I saw him they were questioning him being in the first round. And I'm just like what do we t- I mean, that, if you get <clears throat> what people thought was cornerback cu- one a month ago and now was getting outside the first round maybe yeah. i think that's so much no, value because the injury that's what i'm saying but yeah. i think it's so much value regardless he's going to be fine i think that's insane i love i love Cooper Deshaun. mr yeah. Deshaun. all right and then um last one i kind of want to go over who is the most overrated player according to current adp so not where we're ranking players but where people are being drafted on the mock drafts right now who is like from where they should be where they're ranked to where they should be ranked what's the biggest gap I know you both raised your hands. It's not even close. It's really by a mile. JJ McCarthy. It's not even close. It was Jane Daniels, but now that JJ McCarthy has been in this top five realm, could it's be number two. Maybe two. Yeah, maybe two. That's maybe a joke. Two. I had Jane Daniels because I thought he was more like where Lamar Jackson got drafted late first and was being second was too much. But now that JJ McCarthy is being possibly top ten and the guy shouldn't be a top two round quarterback is unbelievable. Take away if I'm not f-ing with you. If he doesn't win the national championship and has a bad game, he's literally a fifth round quarterback. But he did have a bad game. No, I'm saying because of one game and people doing what they do in drafts and going, oh well, at Michigan he didn't he didn't turn the ball over a lot and they did win a lot of games. They beat Ohio State a, a couple times. Oh, they did win the Big Ten. No, he's terrible. I mean, he's never done anything that these other quarterbacks in the first round have done. He's never blown your mind. No, he had one play that you were like, wow, <clears throat> he actually stepped up. One play. Every other quarterback did that 10 times a game in this first round. He is nowhere near a first-round quarterback, in my opinion, nowhere near a second round. It's not wrong. And I think this is a joke, joke, joke of a pick. I have to get it out of my chest. No bias, but a joke pick. Yeah, I'm not going to get creative here. I agree completely. I'm J.J. McCarthy. Oh, yeah, I mean, you. there's no one else I could even pick. It's even close. I tried. I actually tried. I don't tried. think J.J. McCarthy on my quarterback list would even get near the top 10 on a normal season. And I'm dead serious with this. I'm I'm not I'm not actually not trying to be like one of those alarmist people. Uh, forget the college teams. If you're just lining up all the quarterback prospects, did I freaking hate Spencer Rattler? And I'm like not a big Jordan Travis guy, but like I'm still I'm putting like Devin Leary above him, the guy from Western Kentucky, better stats all every single season, yeah. like better arm talent. Like I don't know. I mean maybe JJ McCarthy's around like that eight or nine spot, but he's not very tall. He's not super athletic. He's never put up good numbers. He's, not, he's just crazy. he. His arm it, isn't the most, crazy. He's a winner. It's the most. But you said a million times he didn't have to throw the ball on the team. I mean, but that doesn't mean he's not talented. No, no. But you said he's a winner. My point was your entire argument beforehand was they don't need him to win games. So anyone in that position, you said they didn't need him to throw because they don't need him to win games. They just run the ball. And then, I I think they utilized him to the minimum amount that they possibly could have. But I think when they did use him, he. He didn't play ab- abnormally bad, right? Like he did well, no, everything he was, just, he was called on to do. Yeah, he reminds right? me so a lot. Can't, he reminds me a lot of the old <clears throat> Alabama quarterbacks. Like I said, like if you remember Alabama, AJ McCarron. No, no, or, totally. Do you remember the guys when Alabama was first, not first good, but when Saban was winning and they were going to the BCS championships every single year? They didn't have these <laughs> quarterbacks that you'd forget their names, like you know AJ McCarron, AJ McCarrons of the world, where. They're winners, right? They don't lose games. They're sol- they're solid college starting quarterbacks, yeah. and their teams are really good, but they are completely absent from any NFL discussion ever. Yeah, Maybe they've, they've never done anything in the league because in the NFL to be a quarterback, believe it or not, you have to be spectacular. Even for game managers, like we're talking Brock Purdy, everyone says, "Oh, game manager." Uh, this dude is unbelievable at yeah. playing quarterback. He's he doesn't just they don't just put him in and say, "Oh, throw the ball four times a game." Yeah. No, he like actually makes plays and brought his team to a Super Bowl after bringing his team to an NFC Championship back to back seasons. Yeah. Like you have to be spectacular. So a game manager in college, I don't think can become a game manager in the NFL. 
I think you need to be a really good player in college, and then you become a game manager in the NFL if you're not, you know, an all yeah. pro. Yeah. But I don't think if you're not good enough to be a star in college, I'm sorry, but like it's not gonna happen. I mean, it's never like, panned that's out. That's a it's, fair. I I a hundred percent see what you're saying, and that is a completely <laughs> understandable argument. But <clears throat> and and maybe the answer is no. But do you think anyone really could have been a true star in Michigan's system? Yes. Because I, they I won the national genuinely, well, exactly, right? They got, they won a national championship. Obviously, it wasn't off the use of their quarterback. It was the use of Blake Corum but imagine, and their defense, which was insane the whole year. So you're asking their me, defense was ridiculous. So Caleb so Williams is on If Michigan. I think Caleb Williams, Drake May, or Jaden Daniels, or Michael Penix, or Bo Nix was on that team, would they have put up star numbers on Michigan? That was the question. They would have won the national championship easier. Yes. That is, the, at, the end of, at the end of the day, stats. okay. Yeah. Everything. Oh, every, everyone. What better stats. The defense, the offense, the coach, the running back, the girlfriend. Yeah, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Team. Maybe I'm wrong. But it's also like, again, you do what you're called on to do. You don't do... Yeah, like he was a no, game manager. No, no, So what, kind of what yeah. I'm trying to say is like, if first and second down are calling for a run play, you don't just say, oh, I'm fucking Jaden Daniels. I'm going to just do whatever I want. Well, and no, it's the same like, idea. I mean, they're calling it's, it's, it's vice versa. Jaden though. McCarthy isn't going to go, okay, yeah, I'm just gonna I have a great argument for Mike that's right? easier. So, and th- name me a top <clears throat> ten pick that was a game man that didn't have their best in college. I know ever not, in the history of call- NFL football. I mean, no, you're right. Like I said, or I mean, I don't know if you remember, but JJ McCarthy wasn't on my top. Or top, a first round. But I'm just trying to play devil's advocate but, here, right? No, and so it's like I get what you're saying, a, but no coaches only call run plays on first and second down if you have a star quarterback. There is a reason. These other teams aren't doing that with star quarterbacks. But if and it's you not, don't fix Wayne Broke, right? If if you're winning games and at the end of the day, all you need to do is to win, win a game. Like, we're saying they can't. They had no <laughs> other method because JJ McCarthy isn't good enough. See, I don't. Uh, I mean, again, that's maybe why I'm they wrong. schemed that way. <laughs> they had to because that's the team they had. Or they didn't need to do anything else besides that, right? It, there can't are a lot go, of games that, that, that way. So, also, I'm telling you right now. So this Michigan-Penn State game, I remember because this is the one I keep bringing up. Uh, Michigan was down 3-0 at the end of the first quarter, and then they were up 14-9 to at halftime. Mm-hmm. So it's a five-point game. Five-point game in Penn State. Mm-hmm. So it's not like it's been working and they're blowing him out and they just want to keep it going. He throws zero passes in the second half. It's a one-possession game. It's not like they've been killing Penn State. He mm-hmm. throws zero passes in the second half. Like, that's not a system thing. Zero yeah. passes is not a thing. Yeah, Air Force throws fair. four passes and a half. And they're that's a triple fair. option. Yeah. So all I'm saying is I think they know some – they saw in J.J. McCarthy. They used them perfectly. They knew exactly what they, they had. They knew exactly what they had and didn't try to ask too much of them in, <clears throat> in pretty crazy spots. And, I mean, we talked about the national championship game. He played a solid game against Bama, almost threw a pick on the first play. But he, that was probably his, or maybe his best game. His stats weren't crazy, but he played well against Bama. Mm-hmm. Against Washington, I mean, he didn't have to do anything, no. really at all. There was the, two fifty-yard touchdowns <clears throat> on the running back. Yeah, I mean, one, he he didn't, uh, he didn't really do picks, anything. So I don't know. Yeah, I'm with Ryan. He's my biggest bust. <clears throat> um, yeah. Similar vibe with a quarterback. If you said J.J. McCarthy, I'm punching the face. <laughs> no, <sorry. laughs> no, no, no. That would no. be the most electric part of the show. It's, Cal- it's Caleb Williams by a mile and not even That's so close. crazy. Caleb Williams, to me, isn't a top four quarterback in this draft class. Um, I would go Drake May. I would go... I'm ready. Go. I, no. I go Drake May. I go Michael Penix. Bo Nix. Jane Daniels. Jane Daniels. And... Yeah, Jane Daniels. I mean, the, are you sure? Yeah. Maybe not JJ McCarthy. No, not JJ. I don't think JJ's on that list either. But I definitely don't think Caleb is there, and especially with how far you see the gap between like those top four quarterbacks or whatever, and the next <coughs> batch within that that round is that top four batch. <laughs> you know, the I mean, pe- the all... Penix Knicks batch. And then the drop to Caleb. All right, the top like twelve, because I think within twelve you're gonna get like Caleb, and you're gonna get like six quarterbacks. Uh, maybe the top twelve, right? You'll get like Bo Nix and Michael Penix if it gets awesome. Okay. Yeah. But anyways, all I'm saying is like, I don't think Caleb Williams should be in that first batch of quarterbacks, and I think where that second batch ends up landing is very far down below, and I think he should be in probably that batch. Gotcha. Yeah, I yeah. He's oh, on the hate list. Kills me. I hate kills it. me every time. All right, Mario, round us out here. Um, 
Yeah, in some mock drafts, uh, some people have <laughs> Byron Murphy going at eight. <laughs> <laughs> Damn right. Amen. I mean, what a way Amen. To yeah, most overrated uh, player. This dude is terrible. Um, Three fifty dollars. Yeah, free fifty bucks though. Shout out Byron we'll Murphy. Uh, no, actually, most overrated we'll player is Jage McCarthy. All right, oh, easy. there we go. Yeah, slay there. I was gonna easy. like try to be funny and say Caleb Williams, but Mike already did it for me. So yeah, yeah, it's yeah. no, it's yeah, I mean, it's pretty. It's I mean, you didn't watch Caleb Williams play in college. Then. I did. At least Mario had respect enough to say, "Oh, he's like ten or 11 for spite." But. Yeah. I mean, yeah, this I'm is QB three. Regardless, it's gonna be a fun to watch with Caleb Williams. Playing. Caleb's gonna go. So he's gonna be on a good team. So oh my god, I wanted to tank so bad. I wanted to just have the worst. Career of all time. Mike, oh, wow. what's the reason? Mike actually hates on players. Like, give me like, a reason. That's, that's crazy. For no I, reason. He just like, like well, one day. Why can't decide. you? Like because if Caleb, our viewers want a reason, Mike. No, I man no. up, grow a pair, and tell no. them the reason why you don't like Caleb Williams. No, I have potential employers watching this. Okay. Yeah. Well, no. <laughs> that might like painting Mike, their nails. Mike, uh, Mike, <laughs> we his thing is, if a player does average. It's not bad enough for Mike. No, he, like, he, he doesn't needs pay him to like in Christ. tear his ACL. No, it's nothing to do with get, football. Get out of Mike the league. Mike doesn't like Caleb. Want to get hurt. Mike, by the I way, get... for the viewers, Mike has no <laughs> care about Caleb Williams' athletic ability. Hate he hates him for because of his off-field painting nails and his crying to his mom. After no, I also was. think he he's not good enough to win when it matters. He doesn't have it in him. Yeah, he's not. He's not, he's not a winner. He's not, not a part of a line. Him and Quinn Ewers. Oh, Quinn Ewers. What the. <laughs> We'll talk about Quinn Ewers this year. Oh, we're definitely going to talk about Quinn Ewers. We'll be talking about Quinn Ewers. We'll be talking about Quinn Ewers. We'll be about Quinn We've been getting a lot of DMs from people saying, why is the Texas flag still up? I don't I Texas seen a is an irrelevant DM. program. Why do you still have that? I haven't seen a single DM. No, no, a lot of people. You don't. Well, control the Instagram. What up? I have access. I'm logged into everything. No, you're not. No, you're not. We changed the password on you. Um. Do you want me to pull it up? Give no, me my no, phone. No, no. Kev, give, give me my phone. Whoa, 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 whoa. Kev, give me my phone. No, I'll take that. Let, let, let me get through something. Well, I've also been getting personally DM'd from a lot of the viewers. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but they've said, you know, Ohio State's always, you know, a top program for football. Oh, of course, always. LSU just won the gymnastics national championship. Yeah. Shout out Livy Dune. Shout uh, out friend out of the pod. Clemson, basketball, Elite Eight, soccer, national champions, baseball, top two. Like, all these schools that you guys are fans of, you know, they're doing so really well. Good, very talented. Why is win. Texas Women's on the pod? Yeah, they and so they haven't I, won anything. They Women's haven't, volleyball national champs. They haven't done anything. No. And so I think it's a valid point. So I, I think from now on, champs. you're not going to have to worry about this. Let's do it for the this. fans. You're Let's not going to do it for some of the fans. It's for the greater good. It's for the people. All I'm saying is I am one of the few people on the entire podcast who has invested in a flag. And if other people want to get a flag, you know, I know. In a what? That no. The L was <laughs> in a flag. The L was silent. Yeah. In a flag. <laughs> you know, you're I right, Mike. You're the only one who's invested. <laughs> I can't say I have, Mike. It's I can't it say I've <laughs> done that. No, it's it's a, all I know is I see a Clemson flag. I've never seen an LSU or an Ohio State what one. He drove down across want, the border. He just said he's never seen a Clemson flag. No, people want. I said I've seen a Clemson flag. I've never seen an LSU or an Ohio State. If people want to put in the money, put up or shut up, as we say in this business. And these people won't put up, so they should shut up. Wait, so bang. Wait, this episode's uh, gonna take it down. What are we <laughs> All I know is we come out with new episodes every week, baby. And you should drop a like, and you should drop a comment, and then you should hit that subscribe button, and then, last but certainly not least, you should find the notification bell. You should click it, and then it will go ding, 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 and then. Stay tuned for next week. Bang, baby. Bang, baby. Bang, baby. Steelers. Uh, Draft. Yeah. Let's go. Horns down. Thursday. Woohoo! Yeah!